while safety and security has always been a priority, we know that it's very important to our community right now more than ever. And so with that, we wanted to provide an update to our entire community um, and, and again, reiterate, reiterate that safety and security is our number one goal, always. It has been and it will continue to be. And we know that we need to be even more vigilant and ensure that we are thinking about all the things that need our attention. So the safety and security of our team, for our staff, of our students, is always going to be a responsibility that we put before all others. And as we focus on bringing um, this safety and security, we're also always going to have excellence and equity in the forefront, ensuring that all of our students and team members are kept in safe, secure environments. We're going to continue to work on all measures that we can think of to be proactive. We want to continue to have the safe schools that we have had in the past so that our students and our team can enjoy teaching and learning and growing together. I want to take a minute to address the fact that for educators, for parents, this is really a difficult time. Schools should be a place of joy. We should be talking about content and projects and recess. But we also know the realities of today. And it requires us to also talk about drills and practices about things that we don't think, certainly during the time that I was in a school, were not things that I was thinking about. So with regard to facilities and our team, it's really important that we begin by thanking our voters. Because of the Dallas, um, the Dallas voters and the 2020 bond, we have been able to invest over $100 million in some facility school safety measures, such as upgrading and adding campus security cameras. That's over $50 million. Ensuring that all of our facilities have keyless entries, access to schools, um, and always having video doorbells so that our team members can see who is at the door entry. Ensuring that even as we construct and renovate facilities, we look at ensuring we have those secure vestibules that we know play a vital role in keeping um, our kids safe, our team members safe. Weapon detection systems, that's another six, five, six million dollars. Classroom safety door locks and devices so that we can ensure that we take every step to prevent harm from coming into our classrooms. Those are some of the higher investments that total more than $95 million. We've also invested in a lot of professional development because at the end of the day, we also know that people are our biggest assistance in ensuring that we know of dangers that may be coming to our schools. We also know that this continual training cannot be just a one and done. So our police department, I've been meeting with, um, with Chief Lawton. Chief Lawton has been meeting with our departments from school leadership. We have a variety of committees and uh, groups of individuals that have been working with us. This is, safety is a very complex problem. There are so many unknowns and there are so many interrelated issues and that is why it takes all of us to work together. Some of the other areas um, that we're also working on, of course, is even upgrading and providing additional training to our hall monitors so that ultimately we can move by adding uh, to our security guards that have additional training. Um, social media. Our police department works with other agencies to ensure that we're continually monitoring and responding. We are investigating social media. Um, it's very important that we continue to do that. We know that at the campus level, uh, our secondary schools have our weapon detections, our metal detectors 
four entrances. Uh, we also have moved some of our campuses to having clear and mesh backpacks. Many of our secondary schools already had those in place. Many of them, that was a campus-based decision. However, we have moved that for uh, all 6th to 12th graders. That will be an expectation of our students. And the district will provide assistance for any of our students who are having challenges in obtaining clear or mesh backpacks. And I've certainly followed the media on some of our uh, measures and know that there's conflicting information about just how well backpacks um, actually create some safety um, by being um, proactive. And the truth is, there is no one right answer. This is going to require a multi-pronged approach. This is about layering our safety and security protocols. It's not going to be one thing and it's going to be um, fixed or corrected overnight. So we're going to continue to employ some of the things that have kept our schools safe. Our kids and our parents have done a phenomenal job when they see something, they say something. And we have been able to be proactive in many areas because our students and parents come forward. And I want to concur encourage our parents to please continue to have conversations with your children at home and report any, any concerns to any adult on our campuses or any of our staff team members at all. We would rather you report something even if you don't think maybe or maybe it's not significant. Let our team of our police department and our, our professionals help you with some of that decision making. Ultimately, um, it's going to take a team approach. We have been able to keep our schools very safe and we want to continue to do that and it will require everyone's assistance.